Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel once again. In regards to the previous video I made of, um, what was it called? Creating presets from Arcade into your iOS devices. Someone did ask how to time stretch the samples, right? So basically, if you create the presets and you want to use it in a different project with a different tempo, how you could time stretch that. I've done a bit of research and I came across two methods. One is using Beatmaker 3. And the other one is using segments by uh, Elias Garage. So let's get into the video and I'll show you what I came across. And yeah. So now, um, as you can see, I have a, I have a, some, um, a presets that I've chosen over here, right? What the hell is it going? So I have these presets that I've chosen, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Right, so just... Uh, was it called shady deal, right? In the E minor uh, key. So then, what I've gone ahead and done is, so in the piano roll, I did draw some notes, basically going from C4, right, up to C, uh, C6, right, up to C6. And as you can see, I did um, draw the notes in for two bars. So every note is roughly two bar long, right? And after every note, I, do, I did leave a space, right? I did leave a space after every note. And obviously, I didn't do the black keys because the black keys are just function keys in arcade. So now, what you need to do now is go into the master channel. Wait, let me get rid of this. Is go into the mixer, into the mixer. Let me get rid of this. So go into the mixer, right? And on inserts, you need to put the... Actually, wait a second. You need to put this on insert one, right? So just go up, insert one, and then go into the mixer, open up the mixer, and on insert one over here, go in and insert Edison, right? So that is Edison right here. Now, what you need to do is arm record Edison, and as soon as you, you oh yeah, and one more thing, arm record Edison, just double click here, wait a second, double click and drag it across, right? So basically what's going to happen is when FL Studio gets to the section, it won't immediately start from the beginning, right? So at least you have time to stop the, the recording. Anyway, so once that is done, back to Edison. Now just click on play. If you click on play, Edison will start. Oh yeah, as you can see over here, it says on inputs, right? As soon as Edison hears an, uh, a sound, it's going to start recording. So if I click on play, you see the whole recording going through now. So the whole thing has finished recording. And uh, um, what you need to do now, so this is basically, it's a single wave file, right? A single wave file. So what you need to do now is um, right click in the middle of the section where it says file, go into file, save sample as, right? You need to choose a location because if you don't choose a location, FL Studio is going to save it in the Edison uh, in its main file, right? So basically, I just go into my desktop and give it a name. So what's the name again? Shady. So let's go Shady. So I'm going to call it Shady Business, obviously, because that's... No, Shady Deal, sorry. Because that was the, the name of the of the presets, right? Shady Deal, E minor, and I'm going to write 130, because that's the BPM. So if I click on Save, it's going to ask me to replace it, because I already have it. Because like I said, I was messing around with the whole thing to see what results I could come up with. Anyway, so replace, replace, and now that's done for FL Studio. So obviously, just like yesterday, you go onto your desktop, click on the um, on the file, go up to click on the file, go up to um, AirDrop, right? And once it comes up, choose your iPad, 
or whatever iOS device, device you have connected. And now we're going to move over to the iPad. So on the iPad, the AirDrop menu comes up. So I'm going to scroll through and look for files. Click on files, select my iPad, and save the sample. But it's going to ask me if I want to replace it. The reason why is because I was messing around with the, with the sample earlier just to see if I can find solution for the time stretch thing. So I'm going to tap on replace for the sake of the tutorial, right? Okay, so this is a sample right here. Now that you have your um, the sample on your device, you need to launch a segment application, right? Once you have that up and running, the first thing you're going to notice is that the BPM, it says 240 at the top. Don't mess around with that. Don't touch it. Don't do anything for now, right? So the next step, obviously, is to bring files up, up like this. Search for the location where you saved the sample. So in my case, I have it on my iPad, and obviously I've changed this, the settings to uh, date. So it shows me the, the recent files that I've, I've uh, saved on the iPad. So now, all you need to do is long tap on that and drag and drop it into segments. Now we can get rid of this. Segments tries to detect the BPM of a sample you import. So as you can see, now it's gone from 240 to 126. And we all know the tempo is 130. But anyway, it does try its best. And uh, what we're going to do now, long tap on where it says BPM, right? Long tap on the BPM. Go down to where it says key detect. Just take that down to E, because we know that the sample is in E. Where it says beats, uh, beats, just take that down to two. The reason why I put the beats down to two is because that's what I found to work best with the arcade samples. And I think it could be for the it could be uh, because I had the the notes set for what's it called two beats, uh, two bars. That could be a reason. But anyway, that that's the way it's, it works. It works best that way. And where it says tempo detect, so you can long tap on that and just write in one thirty, right? And okay, you see now the tempo detector has changed to 130 and the BPM at the top is 130. In some cases, even if you write tempo detect 130, the BPM, the BPM at the top will be a different BPM. So what you need to do in oh, what you need to do in that case is to mess around with these two arrows, right? So long tap, mess around with these two arrows until you see the correct BPM of your sample at the top. Right, and uh, yeah. That being said, now let's see. Let's go ahead and you know, chop the sample up and do everything else. So now all you have to do is click on slice, and then tap on device, uh, device, and tap on divide, and parts. Drag it all the way to sixteen, right to sixteen. Now, obviously, it's not well aligned with the sample. So just move around the. The uh, what's it called? The slice, the slice points, right? Just move them around, but just slightly leave a space before the sample. Okay, so that's that looks about right. And now, once you've done that, all you need to do is, where it says short, change that to gate. So what that's going to do is, you need to hold onto the pad for the sample to play through. So like this, you see, if I leave, if I take my hands up, it stops. And then change this from mono to poly. So that means you can play different notes, right? Okay. Once that is done, once that is done, that's it. So just go ahead, uh, tap on the on the floppy thing, the Dix floppy thing, and give it a name. So I'm gonna call this, since I already have the, the presets already because I was messing around with it initially to see the best solution. 
So just call it Shady. I'm gonna call it this time Shady Biz. E. Minor. Just one thirty. Right. Click on OK. So that's that preset has been saved. Now, if you go into Cubase's three, uh, obviously um, load segments into your DAW, right? Into Cubase's three or whatever DAW it is. Click on on the floppy thing and go look for the presets we just created. So uh, this one right here. If I activate the metronome and play this and play the presets, it should sync with the BPM. Sometimes the, the sample might play faster than the BPM. So just go in and, you know, um, edit the, the slice points again. Just go in, just move the slice points, the slice uh, markers slightly to the left, right? Okay, so let's go in and record some notes. Okay, I can just, you know, let me go and edit that. Okay, so obviously that is playing in tempo because it's 130. Now, what you need to do is click on where it says tempo, right? The BPM, right? And then uh, tap on sync. So if I go into Cubasis 3 now and change the tempo, right? If I bring it down, you can also see the tempo in... in um, in uh, segments will change from 130 to 125 or whatever BPM you have in Cubasis because it's sync, right? You can also enable audio wrap, right? Just to make it play a little bit smooth. engine in segments is not the best but you know it still does function and yeah honestly i do prefer leaving the warp off right just enable sync and that's all it sounds way better in my opinion Okay, so that's it for Cubasis 3. Now I'll go in and show you how to do it in, um, in BeatMaker 3. Okay, so with BeatMaker 3, as you can see, I've already, I already did, <laughs> you know, um, a bit of try, right? Just to see what I can come up with. So anyway, in BeatMaker 3, once you have it open and you have the, pro the project up and running, just drag and drop files up to the next to you. Click and hold on the sample and drag it onto a pad, right? And it's going to load onto the pad, as you can see. It's loaded onto the pad. One thing you need to do, first thing, is where it says BPM, just double tap, tap on that, double tap on the BPM, and then write in 130, right? So 130 is the BPM of the sample, um, of the sample. So once that is done, you click on slice, auto slice, grid, and then set it to two bars, right? Because as you can remember, on the on FO Studio, I did set the notes for two bars, right? So the notes are two bars long. Anyway, um, yes, once that is done, now you can go in and move each, you know, each slice accordingly, right? You just set the slice to the samples. So now once you have, once you have um, all the slices set to where you want them to be set, right? What you need to do now is, is it on 130? Okay, so set the project tempo to 130, right? And then obviously, you need to choose live, stre live stretch, click on that, and then click on high quality, right? So let's go and save, uh, save to slice to pads from current bank, start from pad one, choke 
group one, right? And then apply. So as you can see, as I move through each part, if I go select, as I move through each part, the live stretch is still on, on each part. So if I go in now, uh, do, 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 do. let's draw something. Let's just write something real quick. I'll load up. Okay, so I have a simple pattern right here. Now, if I go in and change the sample, the, the sample, the tempo, it should keep, everything should be sync. So yeah, there you have it, guys. Simple as it is, both of them are easy ways, to be honest. But it looks, you know, Beatmaker 3 looks nice, <laughs> to be honest. But I just don't like the interface. Like, uh, just I don't like clicking around to open windows and things like that. But you know, that's how it works in Beatmaker 3. And you have the, also the presets in Cubase 3 from, uh, what's it called, from Segments, which you can upload in any DW you want and use that. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for sticking through and see you next time. Stay safe.